we're talking about speed picking, why I think everyone can do it, how I think everyone can improve at it, and yeah, that's it. Hello and welcome to another video with me, Elmo J. Karelan. It's good to have you along. You can call me this guy if my name is tricky to pronounce. Speed picking, for me, I think is the hardest thing technically on the guitar, apart from playing melodies with the whammy bar. For me, uh, in my formative years, that was the thing that I wanted to learn. Play fast, pick fast, because that's that, that was for me the holy grail. I'm going to share with you how I learned it and some things that I would do differently these days because uh, I've learned better. How I think all of you can improve significantly at speed picking, uh, why I think so, uh, exercises, all sorts of stuff. Now, I have done this kind of a video uh, about a year ago, uh, but this is just better, so I thought I'd redo that. Yeah, so speed picking. So I have a few points. Number one, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with some version of this exercise. And so on. Let me turn off the delay. Um, now we're always told to play clean so that you get every note um, ringing out like a newborn baby robin. <laughs> um, and that's fine. I mean, that's great for for it sounding good. Okay, this isn't very musical, but for playing clean, uh, for, for, sorry, for playing fast, for picking quick, uh, it's a different kind of thing going on. Uh, so, yeah, while playing clean is fine, if you want to play fast, uh, you have to do something else as well. That's where we get to number two. Um, basically, I would suggest you separate what the two hands are doing, regardless of if it's this exercise or some kind of, uh, some kind of lick. So you separate, separate, separate the two hands, let's say you have this lick, or this, and let's say you have that. There are two things going on there. One is your left hand, which is doing this. Now I was picking uh, only the first note out of four, uh, which becomes different when you play uh, all four notes with your right hand. Uh, so what's going on with the right hand is, first of all, that was messy, but who cares? Uh, it's a different picking almost different technique when you're play, playing it fast. So it helps to isolate the right hand because often the right hand can be a problem. Now what happened to me was that I had a teacher just subbing in for my regular teacher two weeks. Uh, I didn't like my regular teacher who had a look at my right hand and said, you're holding the pick all wrong, uh, concentrate on your right hand. So um, I did, I actually I don't remember exactly, I probably held the pick something like this, I don't know if you can see that. Um, well, anyway, it's all wonky. So what I did was that I um, got a firm grip on the pick, uh, placed it on that part of the finger and pointed it towards the string and uh, that really helped. And then I started playing. <laughs> Now, as you can see, the picking motion is quite large. Uh, and I don't remember doing tremolo picking, uh, but that's basically what I would urge you to do, uh, because that makes uh, it easier for you to concentrate on your right hand. So, instead of doing... 
where you have to think about the left hand and the right hand, just do one string. Take one note. The 12th fret on the E string is an easy, obvious one. And just look at the difference. I'll play it slow and then I'll play it fast. <laughs> There's a difference in motion. See, uh, when we play slow and clean, um, we're concentrating on different things. When we're playing fast, we want to actually minimize movement basically on both hands. But in this case, I'm talking about the right hand. So you just really want to, as soon as you're through the string, you want to be on the way back. So the movement is much smaller than if I were to play. Because the time that I have to do all that uh, is different and I'm concentrating on different things. Okay, so isolate the two and that's number three minimize movement you don't want to be doing this you don't just want to make the movement faster you want to make the movement faster of course but you also want to make the movement uh, smaller uh, because that saves energy and when you're playing fast it really helps to save energy and yeah you hit the string more often if the movement is smaller compared to okay so next up I would suggest that you use a metronome although you don't have to but the metronome makes it easier for you to uh, kind of uh, know where you're at. So you do the tremolo picking thing with one hand and you do whatever it is you're doing on the left hand, you do them separately and then you combine them. So let's say this was the lick you were doing. And then you practice the right hand. And then you combine them at some speed, slower than that. And because you can do probably either hand faster on its own than when you combine them, but still you know that you're there, the potential is there. So uh, you can do the left hand like this, and your right hand, but combined you can only do, but you know that both hands can go faster than that, so it's actually just a hand synchronization thing uh, and you can build up speed. And you're doing it uh, correctly, you're holding the pick correctly and all that. So, use a metronome. So, let's go back to this one. Uh, let me turn down uh, distortion. Okay, let's say 120 is what you're comfortable with. Or that's your limit. Um, what I would do is I would go over that. So I would go to 124, 126, maybe 130. Uh, really push the boundaries. So. And you'll probably mess it up. Uh, but that's okay. And then you go back down to 118 and you go back and forth between the two and let's say you go uh, 130, 116, 120 and you feel 120 is okay. You go to 122 and that's okay. 124, that's not okay. Then you go 
let's say back to 120, that's okay. You go up to 130, 132 or 134 uh, and like this you keep pushing the boundaries. So you uh, move out of your comfort zone and uh, back into it, vice versa, uh, out into your comfort zone and then out again and like that you push the boundary. So, and you don't have to use a metronome for this, uh, I didn't really too often, but that gives you a number, uh, which can be good for motivation. So, that's one, and play that consistently. Uh, if you want to build up speed, do it consistently, and get out of your comfort zone. When you do it consistently every day, uh, it makes your brain take notice. And you might hit a brick wall, but you will get over it with consistent practice. Now that leads us to the next one, which is uh, tension. We're told to play relaxed, which is fine. I mean, we're, we are supposed to be relaxed when playing. We're not supposed to be like... But when you're playing fast, of course, you are supposed to be as relaxed as possible. But that's not to say that there isn't going to be some tension. You're going to be at your physical uh, and mental limit, uh, which means that there will be tension, there will be fatigue, there will be some slight, maybe not pain, but you might interpret it as pain, and sometimes it might even be pain. Uh, you're never supposed to go over the top and injure yourself, but at the same time, you are supposed to push yourself, and that leads to tension, uh, which for some people, means that they, oh, I'm not supposed to feel anything, um, so I'll stop, which is the wrong way. So, if I play this. I can feel some tension there even though I've, I'm kind of fairly proficient at this stuff, um, there will be some tension and that's fine. That, I mean, imagine you're practicing running, uh, you're building up uh, stamina, you run let's say for five miles and if you don't feel anything after that, there's, <laughs> you're not doing it right, um, you're not doing it fast enough. Same thing with this, if you're just, yeah, Yeah, it's so cool, man. I don't feel a thing. I'm dead inside. <laughs> um, then you're not pushing yourself enough. And that's where the metronome, again, might help because you will actually have numbers to show you if you're pushing enough. But if you're doing it without, there should be some tension. Uh, number six, I think this is, is hand position. Uh, and so I have the second angle partly for that. Uh, there are uh, different ways of doing this, but for me, what works, and what I suspect works for a lot of people, is to anchor this part of the hand on the bridge here. Uh, not so that you mute the strings, but... That means that I have, basically, I have a point of reference for my right hand, which means that I don't l have to look at it as much. Let's say I'm doing this. Um, and that means that I can look more at my left hand if I feel the need to do so. Not entirely, right? But still. <laughs> um, and a hand position helps. It helps stay relaxed uh, and it helps with the speed. And uh, I would suggest look at, you probably have a favorite guitar player or favorite guitar players. Uh, let's say you have someone who you admire above all else when it comes to speed picking. Look at that person and uh, try to mimic 
his or her uh, right hand. Some people move from the wrist, some people move more from the elbow. For me, the elbow doesn't work at all. Uh, whatever it is, uh, find your comfortable hand position. Eddie Van Halen used to, he had his hand floating about in the air and he did tremolo picking like... I can't do it at all, but it worked for him. So whatever is kind of your thing. For me, it's definitely anchoring the hand here. So yeah, uh, hand position and watch others uh, because that stuff can really help. It's helped with me with other stuff as well. Vibrato, uh, bends, all sorts of different things. Watching others can really help. And in this day and age, there is no shortage of material. So watch your favorite guitar players on YouTube and figure out what they're doing with their right hand when it comes to speed picking and other stuff as well. Next up, how should you uh, position the pick in relation to the string? Some people say that you should slant the pick and I agree, but then again, if you have a nice hand position here with your hand anchored to the bridge, you're basically gonna have it slanted anyway. Uh, the, the problem is that you could potentially uh, slant it way too much, just you just want it a bit. And if you have the wrong hand position and uh, slant the picket might just mean that you're basically going like through the string almost in the same direction. I mean some people might pick That's no good. Uh, so, hand position much more important, I would say, than slanting the pick. Although I do slant it a bit, so you don't want it to be positioned like uh, in the same direction as the string, so it lies flat on the string. You want a slight angle, um, not too much. Okay, and then you have economy versus alternate picking. I'm not going to get into all that, but because that would be a different video entirely, but I will say that whatever is comfortable for you. So some people like to play up, uh, down, up, down, up all the time, whether it's three string, uh, three per notes per string or not. So something like this would be down, up, down, up, down, up. <laughs> So I ex exaggerated the hand movements there a bit, one more time. Now I exaggerated a lot. I would play it like this, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, because after three, the pick is already going down, so that minimizes movement. That would be... But it's no difference, uh, kind of whatever works for you. So some exercises that I have used uh, to become better at alternate picking. One is that uh, this one where you do this. I did variations on that, which was just to move one string, sorry, one fret up and to the next string. And then down a fret and down a string. You could do it backwards. I never really did that. I did one uh, where you uh, start the next string with the next finger. So you start the first, uh, sorry, the low E string 
with your index finger, the next one with your middle finger, the next one with your ring finger, the next one with your pinky, and then back again to index, middle, ring, pinky, and so on. So it's... since I practiced those uh, but more than that I've basically done licks uh, so I've done uh, Ingvi Malmsteen type stuff <laughs> I've done um, one from Gary Moore's Shapes of Things solo which was something like this <laughs> There was um, something Paul Gilbert did. There was just three notes per string on two strings. Stuff like uh, scale sequences. <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, longer runs. Let's say this is all in A minor. Uh, or. Stuff like that, really. I have a bunch of licks and exercises in my Guitar Academy, which you can get access to through my Patreon, and you can even take that stuff for free. I'm just gonna, because the world is in a sucky situation right now, I'm just gonna make it so you can get access to it for a dollar. Um, you can find my Patreon in the description, and if you you get access and you don't like it, uh, you don't have to pay. So you can even take it for free. Just download all the videos and all the tabs and all that. I have a bunch of that stuff there. Uh, too much to go through here. So uh, check out my Patreon. There's a link in the description. One more thing that people talk about is the pick. Uh, I use 1.5's uh, Delrin's by Dunlop, although this is not Dunlop, but still. Um, it's a 1.5 Delrin. Uh, you find what works for you. It's different. People have different tastes. So that one might uh, make a difference. Now the last point I think might be the most important one and that's that you need to believe that you can do it. Or at least uh, you need to you need to lack the thought that I can't do it. If you think you can't do it well, it'll become a self-fulfilling prophecy and you won't be able to do it. I think everyone can play fast. Uh, not everyone can become the Usain Bolt of guitar playing, but we can uh, play fast. Don't believe me? There's a guy called Cornel Rishka Moon. I'm not entirely sure if that's how you pronounce his name. He's a drummer and a bass player. Now, the weird thing is he has only one leg, as we think of a normal leg, and he has not a single uh, regular hand. He was born that way and you wouldn't think of him if you saw him that that guy is a drummer or that guy is a bass player. He's both and he's actually quite good. I'll link to his channel or a video of his in the description for copyright reasons. I won't put any of his stuff here in this video. Uh, and another reason kind of <laughs> is there's a guy called Anders Eriksson. He's sadly no longer with us but he conducted uh, or he studied learning and how people become experts in any field, uh, how to practice and all that stuff. And some of the stuff I've mentioned in this video has been directly from him. Back when he started his first experiments, if I remember correctly, at least one of his first experiments, was in the field of memory. So he recited digits to a guy called Steve Falloon and 
every expert back then thought that the human limit for that kind of thing was like nine digits. And uh, sure enough, they hit a brick wall at nine digits. So uh, Anders Eriksson re recites first, start easy, five numbers. Uh, and uh, Steve Falloon would recite them back. They'd do one more. They'd do one more. Uh, and when Steve Falloon failed, missed one, they'd go back to, so if he failed at seven, they'd go back to five and then so on. And they hit a brick wall at nine. Steve Falloon could never get over nine. Um, and that kind of, that went on. And at one point, Steve Falloon said to Anders Eriksson that I don't think I can get over nine. But they kept plowing on. And not too long after that, suddenly uh, Steve Falloon managed to, I think it was 12 or 13 which was weird. So, uh, and they kept pushing and he went on to do 20 and so on and so on. And he ended up doing 82. So Anders Eriksson recited 82 digits, numbers to Steve Falloon. He listened to them and then he recited them back, which is pff, 82 numbers. Now, what does this have to do with guitar? Well, maybe not a lot. I th I actually think that there's a lot here to learn for guitar players, but I don't want to, this to become too weird. Uh, but it shows that we have huge capabilities as humans, and we can all do strange and seemingly extraordinary, extraordinary things uh, if we just put our minds to it. And that was really what happened. Steve Falloon really put his mind to it, Did so, actually did some of the stuff that I talked about in this video, which was um, practice in a certain way. So he, he really practiced consistently and put in the effort. And yeah, that kind of stuff, it, it, really, it really brings rewards. I mean, you sit practicing uh, consistently, you push your boundaries, and that's basically it. You stay free of injuries, but you do allow yourself to feel some pain and uh, you will get faster. You will hit walls, but you will get through them with consistent practice. You will find a way. You might need the help of an expert coach in some cases uh, who will look at you and say, ah, well, have you thought about doing this or that the other way? But it is possible. So that's basically it. If you want to watch more of my lessons, there's a playlist here somewhere. Click like if you like the video and share it if you find it uh, helpful in any way. Comment, let me know what you thought, if there is anything you would add. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell notification thing. And join me on Patreon. Like I said, even for the smallest amount, you get access to my Guitar Academy and uh, you can take that stuff for free as long uh, uh, as well as all the music I have in Patreon and all the exclusive stuff. So it's all there. So come join me on Patreon. I hope to see you there and I hope to see you in another video. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs>